Alex, what are you doing outside? There's a pandemic going on. You can't be out here. Got a letter from Tobias. The carrier bird dropped it. You say you say bird? Alex, you're you're your coat hanger. Well, Alex, we finally did it. What do we do? Seven episodes in, and we may have watched the shittiest movie ever made. Uh, we start with about four minutes, four minutes of just our main character, Rod, driving in his blue Mustang. Uh, someone call him a hot rod. This is my pun, pun he, of the episode. We told him not to say it. The producer said not to. But. Uh, after Rod finally reaches his destination after that long and very hard to watch joyride of his, he goes into a diner where he meets our, well, he doesn't meet her, he stares at her for a solid yeah. 30 seconds of no eye contact. He, uh, he eye gropes her, yeah. for sure. Eye molest. <laughs> he eye gropes. He Weinsteins her with his eyes. Oh, well, so much to cut out there. <laughs> but no, how, Rod just doesn't know how to exist around people. So how about dinner to celebrate your success? <laughs> Important note, too, right at the beginning of this movie, you, you'll notice almost immediately how quiet it is. Isn't it weird? There's like, almost like... Quiet? I would say the opposite. It's just super... The, the background noise is super fucking loud. no sound design. Hi. Here is a menu. Thank you. I'll be right back with you. Yep. Their plan yeah, was it. they did camera audio and then silence. So when there was audio, it was just like boom out of nowhere. Yeah, but how about that music? That music is says like elevator music. <laughs> the, the whole track is that. It, it's the best part of the film though. So everything with our two main characters, Rod and Blonde Girl, is just going completely right. We've got Rod sealing those million dollar deals. Cut the big fish. Yeah? How big was the sale? One million dollars. Awesome, man! Biggest sale of my career. Uh, we've got them selling their company for one, one billion dollars. One billion dollars. And they all get just stock options out the ass. For a billion dollars! Biggest sale in my career. Yeah. She also gets advancements in her, mo she's a model. Yep. Her modeling career, she gets the big call she's been waiting for. To after, after we see her at a one hour photo store, she gets uh, contracted with what, Victoria's Secret? Well, it's just like with Rod and his big sale, like, oh, I just caught the big <laughs> fish. The big fish, what, how much? A million. Oh. So we can basically split this movie up into two parts. You've got like the first 45 minutes, it's just like a day in the life of Rod. You know, we see him go and get gas, we see him sealing deals, we see him haggling with the solar panel professional that shows up at his door. And that, sir, is where we're going to install your solar panel. Have you ever, have you ever played The Sims? You, you know, you've seen this movie, you know. You know, Rod and his uh, new lady friend are getting better acquainted, you know start going on dates, and we get to see this just, this beautiful just look, you know, fly on the wall, if you will, of this budding romance. It's, it's and blossoming. It's, it's so, it's, it's, I don't like it. <laughs> oh. it's, it's so, so uncomfortable. They have a scene where they're, they're dancing in a, in a, in a, like a bar or like a restaurant or something. I think somebody's home, mm -hmm. I gotta go. <laughs> Alex, if you had just a beautiful woman in, you know, in her underwear, standing right in front of you, like wanting you, how do you think you would present yourself to her? And the next shot we get is just a, a, a homage to Quentin Tarantino foot fetishing, where we see them playing footsies, and it is disturbing. <laughs> 
I think with a movie called Birdemic, we'd have you know a lot more talk about birds. But no, after 45 minutes of just a day in the life of Rod, we finally get to our bird scene. And boy, it is just <laughs> Uh, and you'll note these birds, some about the CGI seems a little off. I don't know if you know. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It looked great to me. <laughs> Do you think they gave someone credit for the CGI in this movie? You think they have like a, cause I, I don't even know if we made it to the credits, but I really want to go back and see if they actually have like a bird supervisor or some bullshit. Could have been like a high school student, maybe their project. Was well then we can't, we can't shit on it. Yeah, yeah. we can. Yeah, mean, we, we can totally we, shit on yeah, it. We're we, just doing we, a good deal. Not sure if you, you want to go to film school. You're not sure. I mean, they made a film. I mean, you could do it. You could do way Any, fucking better. Anybody can do it. Anybody. So, Alex, yeah. to combat the birds, what do you think would be your first line of your first weapon of choice? You know, what would you just sprint to and grab? Mm, man, shotgun maybe. We need something to protect ourselves. Coat hangers. Mm, they're gonna hang them out to dry. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so after we see our first battle of mankind versus the birds, uh, our characters hop in a van and they just somehow magically conjure up a assault rifle out of nowhere and use that to take out the birds for the next 30 minutes of the movie until that character that is wielding that weapon gets pissed on by a bird. So along this, uh, this epic trip that they're taking across country, I don't, I don't know where they're going to. I don't think it's ever specifically said where they're driving to, but you know, along the way we meet a few characters. We meet a, a scientist that explains how the entire thing was about global warming. The birds are just a product of the global warming, just like SARS and West Nile virus and, you know, topical, but probably coronavirus, right? And one of my favorite encounters that they have in this uh, trip is the soft-spoken cowboy that they meet who wants to buy some gas. He is very adamant about purchasing that gas. And the last character they meet is uh, Woody Harrelson with a really poorly glued on toupee. He's a hippie that talks about more global warming stuff. We're all surprised. Uh, but until they're scared away by the, uh, the, the mountain, mountain lion. lion. <laughs> yeah, there's a oh, mountain lion. Oh, you hear that? So I guess before we wrap this up, the, Tobias's letter, right? Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, Tobias uh, sends his regards, but he, uh, he decided to go quarantine in China from the coronavirus. Uh, I don't know if he got the memo that that's not a good idea, but you yeah. know, I'm went, sure. Went to China and to quarantine? I mean, yeah, I mean, it sounds like something Tobias he's would a, do, honestly. He, he knows better. He's than an us. academic. Yeah. So. Well, let me get this letter. Let's see. Didn't read it yet. Well, how about that? There's our official review. Three or four. <laughs>